Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. Science Max! This episode of Science Max is all about vibration and frequency. Frequency and vibration. What's the difference? We build a maxed out vibrobot, spin a giant disc, suspend water, and play with lasers. All on this episode of Science Max, Experiments at Large. Greetings, Science Maximites, and welcome to Science Max, Experiments at Large. My name is Phil, and today on Science Max, Experiments at Large, we're gonna be looking at vibration. Vibration is when things go back and forth, back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> All kinds of things vibrate, like pendulums. Pendulums. Wait, wait, and pendulum. Pendulums are designed to swing back and forth. Stop that. Also, metronomes. Me oh. <laughs> metronomes are used by people when they're, when they're practicing music to keep accurate time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, putting it back. And... Okay. We're gonna be building. Whoa. Okay. We're gonna be building. <laughs> this little guy. This is a vibrobot. And he vibrates and he skitters around on the paper. And if we take the caps off the markers, he makes interesting patterns on the paper. <laughs> okay. So let's get started. Let's. Build a vibrobot. Like, oh yeah, you know what? Maybe it's time to take off the ski boots, huh? Oh. Whew. There we go. That's better. So today, like I said, we're gonna be making a vibrobot. And here are all the materials you need to make your own. Plastic cup, three markers, an electric motor, just make sure you ask an adult first, a battery, a plastic drink bottle cap, a toothpick, scissors, this kind of tape is called electrical tape, science tape, which is the same as invisible tape, but of course I use this tape only for science, and some modeling clay, and these are two bendy straws that I've taped googly eyes to. These are not necessary, I just like them for decoration. Now remember, if I'm going too fast here, which I probably will be, you can get all of the steps on how to make your very own vibrobot on our website. Okay, so here's how you get started. First, you're gonna make the feet for your vibrobot. So I attach some science tape to the markers, and then I put the marker on the bottom of the cup. And then I do that again to the next marker, and then the third, balance it like that. There. Next thing you wanna do is take your plastic drink bottle cap and make a hole with a toothpick. You wanna make it off to the side, right about there, just like that. That's so when it turns, it will be off center. That's what's gonna give us our vibration. So once you've made that hole, take some modeling clay and stick it in the cap to give it some weight. When you've done that, stick it onto the shaft of your motor like this. See how it's off center there? Now we just need to attach it to the vibrobot. I just put it right here on the top and I like to attach the battery to the back of the cup. And now finally, we're going to attach the eyes. We take some science tape and we put the straws over here. I am Vibrobot. I am here to vibrate. Take me to your leader. So then you attach your tape with the wire to the top of the battery there, and then the other wire to the bottom of the battery, just like that. And let your Vibrobot make some art. Ha 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 Now, if the battery is new, your Vibrobot might be jumping up and down quite a bit. So you can do what I like to do and add some more weight, and then you make better lines with your Vibrobot. And your Vibrobot makes art. How long will he last? Probably till lunch. And there you go, Vibrobot art. Art made by a robot. How cool is that? So that's what we're gonna do today. 
I'm gonna meet Chris from Logics Academy and he's gonna help me max out the Vibrobot. Plus, we're gonna learn a little bit more about vibration. Come on. Oh, hey, Chris. Oh, uh, oh hey, Phil. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. Okay, here's your Science Max lab coat. Thank you. So you guys at Logix Academy, you also build a Vibrobot, right? That's right, we do. This is mine, and it works pretty well. That's awesome. So, I want to max this out. Cool. So I thought we would start with, instead of this motor, we would start with this motor. Wow. It used to be a round circle, but I cut it off so that it's off-center. Perfect. I've also got, this is our battery. Fantastic. That's as far as I've gotten so far. Well, it looks like we need a frame next. Right, something to be the cup. That's right. So we just need some sort of larger cup. Ooh, how about that metal shelf over there? Oh, this thing? Yeah. This is just something I keep my parts on. It's perfect. Really? Yep, the shelves will house everything that we need, and it looks like it'll be strong enough to hold everything together. Now, the Vibrobot had markers on the bottom of it. That's right. To make a little pattern. Should we try that with this? Because we're going bigger, what if we use paint and paintbrushes instead? OK, sure. We could attach paintbrushes to the legs. Pass me one. All right, so now all we need to do is get some paint and some paper. That's right. And, uh, and we can fire it up. Okay, let's, let's move it over this way. Vibration and frequency. What's the difference? They're all connected. Ta-da! Now, get, whoa. Wow. Vibration is things going back and forth. Back and forth and back and forth. It's a cycle. Cycle, 25 bucks. Oh yeah, it's the wrong kind of cycle, never mind. Well, if that's vibration, then what's frequency? Well, frequency is a measure of how fast or slow, how frequent those vibrations happen. Look at this bowling ball. It is swinging back and forth, but not very fast. You could say it has a low frequency. We measure all kinds of things by the frequency. This thing is terrifying. When you turn the dial on your radio, you're tuning in to different frequencies of radio waves. Hey, look at this punching balloon. It's going very fast. You could say it has a high frequency. <laughs> so, now you know. Vibration is something going back and forth, and frequency is how quickly it does it. Yeah. Ramona, the bowling ball keeps coming through everything. How do you turn it off? Okay, back to our main experiment. Chris and I are taking a Vibrobot and maxing it out. We have a large motor and a battery, and we're taping it all to some shelving. Just like our small Vibrobot, our motor needs something to make it unbalanced when it spins. That's what will cause the vibrations. It's just taped. I haven't attached it in any other way. Do you think that's okay? As an engineer, I have superior faith in duct tape. Okay, well, that, that's good to know. We're also adding an on-off switch and some paintbrushes on the bottoms of the legs so our maxed out Vibrobot can make art just like the small one. The final step, dipping the brushes in paint and setting it on a big piece of paper. We fire it up and it immediately shakes everything off the shelves. Oh! It, is, it totally spilled all the stuff on the shelves. The motor shakes the Vibrobot a lot, but there's a problem. All that shaking is starting to take its toll on the shelves. The wheels come off, the screws come out, and finally... It totally it shook itself apart. Destroyed itself. The shelving unit just completely falls apart when it's being shaken. Vibration is really hard on the structure of an object. We need something more sturdy, something that can, that can take weight. Steps, maybe? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this looks much better. Okay, great. So we build the new Vibrobot out of this. So more paint brushes, bigger motor, more paint, more everything. More everything. All right, good. This is a pendulum. It's just a weight suspended on a line and anchored from above. Pretty simple. Pendulums were used for hundreds of years for all kinds of reasons, but most famously in clocks. 
Why were pendulums used in clocks? Well, here's why. Let's mark every time the pendulum hits the bottom of the swing, right here. Okay, watch. All right, now here's the question. How fast will the beeps be if I swing it from much higher up? Let's find out. No matter how high the pendulum swings, it keeps the same frequency. That's why they were used in clocks, because it could swing for a long while, and even though it would lose energy, it would still keep perfect time. The frequency of a pendulum doesn't change, no matter how high it swings or how much weight is on the bottom. The frequency comes from how long the line is. Now this is a pendulum wave. Because each bowling ball has a line that's a different length, they have a slightly different frequency. They start out swinging together, but soon they start to make interesting patterns. Remember, each pendulum is keeping its own perfect time, even if it's slowing down. It's only the length of the line that gives each pendulum a different frequency. And now, we're gonna max it out with, with, um, well, I guess these are already bowling balls, so this is already pretty maxed out. I'm just gonna, just gonna leave that there. These are balloons. This is a laser, and these are awesome laser safety glasses. Now, lasers are made of light, and light has a frequency. In fact, each color of light has a different frequency. This is a red laser. Check it out. Yeah, cool. This is also a very powerful laser. Oh, I can pop the blue balloon with the red laser because the blue absorbed the red light from the laser and then it heated up and the balloon popped. But here's the cool thing. I cannot pop a red balloon with a red laser because the red balloon reflects the red light from the red laser and I can't pop it. If I wanted to pop a balloon with a red laser, I need to use a darker balloon, one that absorbs the red light, like <laughs> like a black balloon. <laughs> so there you go. Lasers, frequencies of light. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this red balloon because it's always nice to have a balloon. <laughs> Chris and I are maxing out the Vibrobot, but our last version shook itself apart. Now the plan is to start with something more solid and try again. We found some very solid steps and added an even bigger motor, an even bigger battery, and attached a half circle wheel to make the vibrations when the motor spins. We add some paintbrushes and fire it up. Here we go. Come on. Go, Vibrobot. Wants to move. Is it moving at all? Hmm. Hmm. So it's still not working. It's already getting caught in the paper and it's on the paintbrushes. And the, yeah, the paintbrushes seem to be absorbing too much vibration and then the paper's stopping it as well. So why don't we remove the paintbrushes? Yeah. And we might as well remove the paper if we don't have any more paintbrushes. Yes. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Okay. No paintbrushes, no paper. Okay. Now let's try it. Three, two, one, go! Yeah! Aha! It's moving. Not bad. The shaking is good, but I don't know if the shaking is enough. So, what do we do? Well, we could add another battery. Another battery which would give it more power? That's right. Okay, let's try that. Okay. Okay, so it wasn't working before. No. Not enough power. And now we've got a second battery here. That's right. We've wired them up so that one power feeds into the other, so we've got twice as much juice as we did. So it's just a matter of clipping this onto there. That's right. But hold on. Yeah, safety glasses, because now we don't know what's going to happen anymore. Ready? Three, two, one. The extra battery makes a big difference. The new Vibrobot shakes around and only shakes itself apart a little. All right, Whoa. that was amazing. <laughs> okay, so all we needed was more power. That's right, I think it didn't have enough power to, to vibrate up and down and that's why it wasn't moving every time it hit the ground. So I think if we're gonna use this much power, I think we need to build it again. Okay. Build it even stronger and with a bigger motor. Yeah. And more power. And then maybe I ride it. <laughs> But you think we can build that? Of course. Of course. Okay, let's do it.
You wanna see something cool? I can make this water levitate, defy gravity using the power of science. You wanna see? Behold! <laughs> gravity defying water! I can even make the water go very slowly. Or I can make the water go back up into the hose. Or I can make the water completely stop. <laughs> you know what's interesting? The water does not seem to be stopped for me. You see stopped water because you are looking at it through a TV camera. See? Real life, TV camera. Real life, TV camera. You see, movie cameras and TV cameras take a whole bunch of still photos and then run them together really, really fast. 24 times a second for our TV cameras. I have created a device that drops water at 24 times a second. And what happens is everything lines up. So it looks like the water drops aren't moving. But watch this. I grab the hose and it's fine. But I let it go and the hose is vibrating back and forth at exactly the same time the camera shutter is going back and forth and everything looks like it stopped. The power of frequency has defied gravity. Okay, so not really. It's kind of a camera trick, but I prefer to call it science. Here's a fun way to play with things going back and forth. This is Euler's disc, and it's designed to spin like this. What's going on is friction and gravity are slowing that down and pulling it towards the Earth. Now, you don't need a fancy disc like this to do this at home. All you need is a pot lid. Check it out. When the pot lid spins, friction and gravity start to slow it down, which means each spin gets lower and lower and the frequency gets higher and higher. But the difference between a pot lid and Euler's disc is Euler's disc is made to go for as long as possible. The heavy puck has a slightly rounded edge and sits on a glass surface that is slightly concave, like a bowl. All of this is designed to make Euler's disc glass a really long time, which is, which is quite a while. But eventually, friction and gravity pull the disc down, and finally, it stops. Pretty amazing, right? Well, wait till we max it out. This is Trevor, head of the Science Max build team. Hey. Thanks for setting this up, Trevor. So what is this? This is a giant side of a spool, big hydro spool. OK, so this is the largest disk that we could totally find. And we've got it all hooked up here. We lift it up, we spin it, and then you pull the thing, and it will drop down and, and spin like a coin, because it's the only way we can do that with something this heavy. Yeah. Ready? I'm ready. OK. Trevor and I hoist it up and get it suspended above the ground. Yeah. Then I start to wind it up. Ready? When it's going fast enough, and go Trevor! Trevor pulls the release and... It turns out a 200 kilogram spinning disc works exactly the same. As it spins and rolls, gravity and friction work on it and the frequency speeds up as it gets closer to the ground until it stops. Giant Oilers disc. Nicely done, Trevor. That was awesome. That was great, let's do it again. All right. Our Vibrobot was working well, so that means it's time to make it way bigger. We started with a big metal table and added a huge motor, one 20 times as powerful as the last one. Instead of batteries giving us 12 volts of power, we're going to use a plug, which is 10 times more power. We've added an off-center wheel for vibration, bolted the motor to the frame, and added a protective cage all around to prevent anything from flying off. It even has a seat for me to ride. OK. OK. You ready? Ready. Here we go. We fire it up, and it's very shaky. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That was really uncomfortable. <laughs> oh. It was like very bangy, even with the, even with the seat. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try standing on All it. All right. 
When I try standing on it, the Vibrobot lives up to its name. It vibrates all around the lab. Oh, wow. My legs are numb to, to the knee. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Bye, robot! All right. Yeah, that worked really well. That was awesome. I can't, I really can't feel my feet right now. And it held together, which is impressive. That's right, the more power and the stronger structure paid off. Yeah, I, the only thing I regret is not getting a chance to, wait a minute, wait a minute, come with me. Okay, so I achieved my dream of riding the Vibrobot. You did. But we never got a chance to make art, so we've dipped a whole bunch of nuts and bolts and heavy things in paint. Yep. And now we're gonna turn on the Vibrobot and see if we can make some art. <laughs> Let's see how it looks. Oh, wow. Ta-da! Vibrobot art. Vibrobot has been a huge success and we got some art to keep. High fives. Well done. Science Max, experiments at large. Who gets to keep the art? Uh, rock, paper, scissors. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, tie. One, two, three. Tie. One, two, three. One, two, three. Wow. One, two, three. Ah, oh, tie. One, two, three. Man. And there's gonna be a red balloon, but those red balloons are gonna be pushing this way. And then this afternoon, we're gonna have this blue balloon, which is quite nice. Over to you, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Science! I figured we would have maybe a bigger motor. Yes. Or a bigger, no. I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> All thrusters ahead. Whoa! <laughs> Balloons. <laughs> Science! <laughs>